Howdy everyone, Rat9 here, and welcome to a quick little episode of Rat9 Plays the Dungeon Beneath. Uh, no idea if this is necessarily going to uh, have a lot of playtime on the channel, but at the very least, live over on twitch.tv slash Rat9 Plays right now, we're having a little bit of fun with some roguelikes today, and the Dungeon Beneath is one of the ones that I wanted to play. So we're going to play a little bit of it, you know, somewhere around 30 to 45 minutes or so, and go from there. Um, if you didn't see the Rut9 looks at of this game from a couple days ago, why don't you go check that out? It's actually seems like a really fun game, and you know I, I go through a little bit more of the mechanics since I'm working through the tutorial in that video. This one we kind of know what we're looking at, although we had gotten through the tutorial and not actually started to run. So um, I'm interested to see what happens here. And also after that video came out, literally the or after we recorded that video, literally the next day patch came out that added a bunch of stuff so um you know that's the thing so we get to choose our hero uh, we choose a random hero and artifact um we could get elder grix summoned allied units can't be exhausted one attack seven hp when an ally dies attack or we get tazgian battle start give your hero plus three power which i believe power is the one that is um one turn of plus damage. So a little bit less HP. Begin with an Essence Distiller Inexhaustible. New game minus. I'm imagining that there's a new game plus that unlocks as well. So we're definitely not doing new game minus. Um, excuse me. I'm interested in this one, honestly, because Inexhaustible is really, really nice to have for the flexibility. There's three gold. We start off with a follower, a follower, and a druid. After the first round, summon two dubs. Imagine having a new game minus. It, it's very interesting. So Essence of Stiller, after the first round, summon an enemy lesser void wisp. Okay. Sure. Um, so we started with a relic that spawns more enemies. I mean, if it's like Loop Hero and that means more loot, then I'm okay with that. New Game Plus is already kind of dumb. I mean, it, it really all depends. Uh, I've seen a lot of different ways to scale difficulty, and I don't know that I really have a favorite one. Although, Hades' implementation of heat levels, where you kind of choose which pieces you want to buff to be more difficult is probably one of the best implementations I've ever seen of controlling how much difficulty you want to uh, throw at yourself. Targets random lane or random character in any lane. All right, I don't like you. Most heroes start with powerful artifacts, hover over the icon. Okay, so it's going to still give us some tutorial tips as uh, as time goes by. So as it sits right now, um, obviously this guy is super dead. Um, I think it makes the most sense though. So we could either move our hero over and immediately get a big smack on the boss or on the, the enemy hero, or we could move our follower over and ensure that both of these kill this rat and then we still get the same smack. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. We get one less damage on the hero, but we actually get this rat out of the way. And by blocking this rat down here, we're still also going to take no damage on our hero. Okay, so we summon doves, which are literally just chump blockers, which is actually kind of fine, honestly. Then a lesser void wisp is just a, a simple 1-1 one, one that attacks itself and deals one damage to all allies. Okay, that is not actually an enemy. It is something that kills itself and deals damage to all of them. That's actually an incredible relic. Um, So I'm pretty sure we just click the attack button, although... Do that. Yeah, I guess I, I wasn't sure about the order, so it did end up dying. Probably because it goes from top down. Uh, it ended up dying from the Void Wisp uh, before attacking. Alright. Little campfire action. So, we've got enough gold for two units if we're so inclined. So poisonous allied summoned units have plus one attack. Target becomes poisoned. 
takes one damage after. So poison is very, very good. Um, has to be in the back line. Yeah, we can only fit one more, but we could take two and replace one of our uh, followers. Because I like the thought of the Fey Adept making the doves that the Druid summons actually deal damage. So Rogue, Poisonous, Inexhaustible, one attack, three HP. I mean, the Fey Adept is like squishy. Uh, two HP is small. And then we've got an Armorsmith. Give another ally in this lane, which we learned lanes are the horizontals, not the verticals. Um, give another ally in this lane plus two armor. So I think what I want to do is bring in the Fey Adept and then dismiss that character for one gold and bring in the Armorsmith as another frontline unit. It's got plus one HP over um, one of the followers and actually has a fairly useful ability as well. So that seems pretty good to me. And so now I would, the doves that we're going to summon are actually somewhat useful. Has plus one attack for each skeleton. Follow up, summon a bone pile. And then bone piles transform into a skeleton at the end of the round. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I had accidentally moved this character out of the way so it wouldn't take damage, but didn't readjust before we went back in and they can't attack from the back lane. Okay, so ultimately, we're not going to be able to kill all four bone piles, I don't think. Yeah, I can change him now without getting him exhausted. I'm figuring out if there's a way we can lay things out. We could have our hero kill this barrel, but that doesn't kill the bone pile. So I guess we'll just accept that this is going to be the right setup. There's no attacks coming in on uh, this bottom lane. So at least for now, we get both bone piles are dead. Bone pile barrel is dead. And then we'll just have to deal with one skeleton down here and a barrel, which we can go from there. And we'll have two doves to block as necessary. Okay. And then uh, this Void Wisp is going to kill the Bone Pile, which is good. Um, we can also move our hero freely, which I'm pretty sure that this is pretty good. I don't know why it's not showing the proper damage, but essentially these two... You'll kill the bone pile, you'll attack the enemy hero, you'll attack the enemy hero. So we'll get two damage down and poison them. We'll poison them, yes. Uh, the doves will kill the barrel, and then the skeleton will kill one of the doves. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, this seems totally fine for me. Oh yeah, actually, even better. So the void has um, the most speed, and just flat out goes first. So we just straight up kill the boss because poison. Or the hero. Excellent. Yeah, I, I need to stop mixing up uh, boss and hero. Uh, like, there's specific terminology here. Alright, so XP is um, it's kind of a tough one. So this obviously doesn't go on our hero. Um, I feel like I want to get the Fey Adept leveled up, assuming that we get more HP. Because 2 HP is super squishy. And if that ability gets buffed... Uh, where it becomes summoned units have plus two attack or something like that. Uh, that seems pretty good to me. I want summoner to be fair. I, the summoner was my second choice. I just, I really want to see if we can upgrade that to HP. I wonder if it'll upgrade the doves. That's fair. I, I would like to see if it upgrades the dove. Doves. So plus two health, plus two speed um, can only go on our armor smith. But now our armor smith is actually the fastest unit we have, which is kind of cool. We need to remember the armor ability uh, for... Um... <laughs> Why is it always cubes of um, uh, slime? When an ally dies, restore one HP. Okay. Splitting slime. On death, summon two slimes. It's always slimes, man. I mean, they're slow as heck. Um, 
Oh, so we get bonus gold in this case if we take no hero damage, which should be fairly feasible, I would say. At least this one doesn't poison. Very true. Very, very true. I mean, this this seems like an easy play. Start with the armor smith up here. That'll give our hero... Potentially give our hero some armor, just in case, but... Um, more importantly, if it hits the Fey Adept, then we get a little extra there. So on death, it'll summon two slimes, which likely means one of them will go here. Uh, if not, then our hero, hero gets a swing on the enemy hero for four. Um, three damage coming in here does mean that this unit would die, though. So actually, no, we have to set it up like this so that the armor smith can tank the three damage. Because otherwise, we would just straight up lose our follower here. Yeah, I think that's the way we're going to play it. Oh, it summons him in the lane. Does the slime die before the damage? I probably should have paid more attention to that, yes. So... Lesser Void Wisp is just going to immediately yeet all of these. So I'm going to move our hero over and probably just press attack. GG easy. So this, I mean, I don't know what all of the relic powers are, obviously, because we're just starting the game. But Essence Distiller seems ridiculous early on. Imagine later we're not going to be so lucky as to like so many things just die as um, from one damage. But at least right now it seems to be really helping us through the early game. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on getting the Fey Adept up one level, and then uh, we'll probably try to get the Druid up a level next. So campfire, we could potentially um, switch out three. Probably only one that I care to switch out unless these end up being ridiculously good. Cleric of the Rose, deal one damage to the nearest enemy in this lane on top of one basic attack. Um, does something when an allied character's health increases. Okay. We currently do not have any synergies for that, so I don't know that it's um, worth taking. If this character kills an enemy, gain one gold. I mean, that seems pretty incredible. It's also to attack. We obviously have um, a fairly low damage team. We just get uh, Essence Distiller. And then Poisonous, Inexhaustible, 6 speed, 3 HP. None of these really inspire me. I mean, a 2-3 in place of the Follower seems like an okay trade. But I, I will gladly spend one gold for potentially better stuff here. So... This one is just straight up better. It's a 1-5 a that becomes a 2-5 at max HP and is inexhaustible. A great frontline unit. Divine Protector. On death, give an allied mage shield, uh, which blocks the next source of incoming damage. It's a 1-6. And then another Cleric of the Rose. I hate classes like Tanner, you great one, the elf that is. Yeah, the... Um, I think, yeah, both of these two are mages. So the Divine Protector would be pretty good, but I, I think that um, Sword Dancer here gives us a little bit more damage, and Inexhaustible is just very, very good in my books. I'm going to dismiss that character, bring you over. I've yet to get used to this keyboard. Wait, hold on, I can have more? Party full. Okay, never mind. I it, it, I was like, is it going to let me do that? Do we like the Divine Protector more than the Armorsmith? And I think the answer is no. But... Yeah, because that's an on-death ability. And we don't really want to rely on on-death abilities. I believe that there are shops as well. So I'm not going to spend all of our gold. Uh, in case we can get some good stuff later. On counter, gain two power. The enemy hero gains power after taking damage. Power increases the damage of a character's next attack. At the end of each round, restore one health to a damaged character. So this room has a special ability. 
kind of cool. So we've got a bunch of ran uh, normal goblins. They just change lane to change lanes at the end of round. So ideally, we don't want to hit the enemy hero until we can straight up kill them. That said, we have a setup where if we start like this, remember to always cover your lanes. Yeah, I definitely want to have one of these two down here. But I'm thinking if we do the five damage this turn by Sword Dancer breaking the barrel, you can take one damage, you can take two damage, that's fine. We get five damage on the enemy hero. If they don't get healed by the fountain, then the Wisp just kills at the end of the next round. So I feel like that works fine, because then he won't actually be able to use that plus one power, or plus two power. Never mind, he totally gets to use it because slow. Rip. Um, and then, yeah, did, did get healed, unfortunately. Um, and that was our Elf Dancer, unfortunately. So we don't need to cover this lane. I'm happy to keep the Fey Adept up here. Um, we're probably gonna... <laughs> Actually, you know what we do is we move the Armored Dove over and just let it be exhausted. So that armored dove is going to take all three damage. Um, and then actually these two will get in for some damage on the side. So actually we're totally fine. We just, we kill this round. In fact, the dove gets the kill, which is excellent. All right, so we did lose a, um, a unit in that one, uh, just because I, I wasn't paying attention to the order of things, which seems like that's probably something you want to pay attention to. Yes, so that uh, did give the Fey Adept plus one HP, and summoned units have plus one attack on top of that. Absolutely exactly what I was looking for, and we get an extra slot, but... Um, yeah, so now I, I think we probably upgrade the Summoner next to see if we get um, better doves even more. And you did call it. It is eye color change. <laughs> um... So let's actually uh, scooch the camera over a little bit since we know that stuff is going to pop up at the bottom right now. I don't remember if this covers up anything. I think this covers up like the attack button or something. Uh, plus two health, minus one speed. I mean, you got to think that that feels pretty good on the armor smith, but... You want Sword Dancer to have high speed so that they're unlikely to take damage before they get a chance to attack. Yeah, I, I, I don't quite know who this would go on. So excited, didn't see what he gained. Yeah, so uh, gained uh, plus one HP and the doves are plus one attack, which seems pretty good. Yeah, so actually, I think what I want to do is move the shield over to the Sword Dancer and then give the gauntlets to the Armor Smith. So the Armor Smith is slow, but that's totally fine. And this way, the Sword Dancer gets a little tankier and is pretty much going to go first uh, unless we're up against something super speedy. Enraged Ooze. Excellent. A bonus objective, Protect the Lost Adventurer. I hate escort missions. The enemy hero can gain armor. Armor acts like temporary hit points. However, armor only lasts until the end of round. Characters can't move when placed on webs. All right. Cannot move, and we obviously don't want to move a unit down here. 14 HP, huh? Well... Obviously, we want our hero here. How are you supposed to protect him? I, I honestly have no clue. We can't move him and the ooze is going to do three damage. No, can't do it. 
Yeah, I, I, I do not know how that's supposed to go. Which means I also can't move the Sword Dancer over to get a little bit more damage. So... I guess we're not getting the bonus objective on this one, unless I'm just missing something incredibly obvious. Oh, and you also move. Yeah, gain plus one armor, then move. Okay. Seems good. Um, our doves cannot move because they are in webs. Move that over. Uh, barrel dead, you'll take two damage. Three damage from the wisp. Um, sure, seems fine. Barrels die from void. Yeah, it's true. Oh, actually, literally everyone gets to attack. Because Void too strong. Well, I'm sorry that I couldn't one-shot the boss before it... Or before it destroyed the... Um, Lost Adventurer. Yeah, let's, uh, let's see if we can get the Druid buffed up. So we have two options here. Um, I'm not really feeling the campfire right now. I think I'd rather go over here, because this is the shop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have 12 gold, so we could buy one of anything. Ground end, restore one HP. Seems pretty decent. On death, give plus one attack to all allies. Restore one health to a damaged non-heroic ally. And this is on follow-up. Which I believe is after it attacks. Mage only. I mean, that seems pretty good. Uh, we have some slow mages. Um, it seems like this is a good way to um, try to keep our front line alive a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I don't know that I see it as super good. Especially not for all of our gold. I'm tempted to refresh here because none of these really inspire me. I don't feel any of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking the same thing. I'm going to refresh here. Plus two speed. Minus one attack, plus five health. I mean, that's hilarious. <laughs> Actually, we could put that on our Sword Dancer, and as long as they're on max HP, then they still have one attack. Uh, plus three HP. Neither of these two have item slots. We don't have an inventory, though, so I can't, like, take Titan's Wall, and then once one of these gets upgraded... Uh, call me crazy, I'm gonna refresh again. Character can't be poisoned. Deal one damage to the lowest health enemy. Elf only. Well, you're an elf. That seems quite good. Plus one attack, minus two health. Yeah, so we're, we're just going to do that. Just to free extra one damage to something that's on low HP. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. And then uh, now we're going to what is actually a boss, not a hero. Uh, reanimated Colossus attacks twice. Um, I mean, that, that, that could probably hurt a little bit. Follow up, summon a bone pile. Of course. So I feel like unless more adds are getting summoned, we 100% want to destroy the adds first. I think the way I want to play this is actually put you here, you here, you here. Make sure the Dove Mancer doesn't die before he summons them. Yes. I, I'm thinking that I like this. Our hero can take one damage. That's totally fine. Um, you will one-tap the Twin Mancer. Our Armorsmith takes two damage and then gives two armor to our Druid. And then these two units gets the Twin Mancer down to one HP. And summons a bone pile, which we can totally deal with. We get the um, void next turn, which finishes off the Twin Mancer. 
And then we can just go ham on the boss at that point. I feel like I'm okay with this. Oh, actually, they all, they're also poison, so they just straight up get yeeted from poison. Even better. And we also get uh, damage to the lowest health enemy. So we killed the bone piles. The doves can kill the twin mancer. Actually, if we do that... No, because the dove would be exhausted. I was thinking that it would be better because the sword dancer plus dove plus hero can kill twin mancer. And then we could potentially get the dove over to do more damage to the boss itself. But the dove would be exhausted moving over here. Actually, I think it's the same amount of damage anyways. So we sack the armor smith. I mean... No, I don't think we do. Hey, we got the developer in chat, Puzzle Box Games. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. Happy to have you here. You got a great game on your hands. And it uh, looks like uh, Puzzle Box just dropped a Steam key in the chat. So if anyone claims that, make sure you let us know you claimed it before uh, you know multiple people give it a try. But seriously, thank you so much for stopping by. Sorry you ran into such a bad luck with the Lost Adventure plus spider webs. <laughs> oh, no worries. I figured it was RNG, and that can just happen. Um, not a big deal. This is only our second run, and by second run, I mean first run after the tutorial. Um, I don't know if you saw, but I uh, actually um, took a look at the game a few days ago and put up a video on it on YouTube as well. So um, I I'm definitely looking forward to playing more of it on stream. I think we move the fighter over, or um, the sword dancer over. Armorsmith isn't going to take any damage here. And this way, you know, sword dancer can tank the two hits from the Colossus and still attack because inexhaustible. I don't know if this was, like, max damage we could get on the boss, but it's something. You know what? Plus poison, the, the poison damage, plus the, um, the necrotic wand here. It's actually a good chunk of damage, and then... You have one speed, so do we just win now? I think we just win. Glad you're enjoying the game. Have a great night. Absolutely. Thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to seeing what more you got going on with the game. Um, I actually took a look at it one day before the newest patch came out. So um, I was joking with Adrian on Steam or on, um, on Discord that like I, I should have waited a day or I need to pin a comment on the YouTube video that's like, yeah, by the way, the game got even better since I recorded this video. <laughs> Did in fact use the Steam key. Thank you very much. So far I have great impressions of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for dropping a free Steam key in. Um, Adrian's been a long time supporter of the show, so I'm glad he gets a chance to play it as well. So honestly, I'm just going to click the attack button because I'm pretty sure we just killed the boss here. Like, by a lot. And we got the uh, reanimated Colossus achievement from that. Awesome. So, heal our hero up to full, grab some gold, uh, plus two XP. We'll go ahead and level up the summoner. Let's see what bonuses they get. Two HP, one attack, and summons ravens instead of doves. That seems incredible. I would venture to guess that ravens are going to be a little bit uh, better than doves. Yeah, it's now a raven mancer instead of a dove mancer. But plus one attack, plus two HP on level up seems incredibly good to me. And then this is an artifact. First time an ally takes damage, give them shield. Summoned allied units can't be exhausted. I mean, that's ridiculously good. Characters at campfires cost two less gold. I mean, I'm, I'm all in on uh, let's just make our raven mancer as uh, strong as possible. I really, really like that there's, um, you know, passive artifacts and relics and stuff like that. It's exactly what I would want. What is the next level? Eagles? I feel like I, I would take the jump probably to Hawks is what I would guess. All right, potions. Allows fighters to use equipment from any class consumable. Transform a fighter into a basic copy of a random party member. The character loses all their equipment consumable. 
or plus one XP. Basic copy of a random party member. I like the potion of versatility here. Why don't why don't we drop that on our sword dancer? And then we've got enough for the XP. Um, I think I want to get our sword dancer leveled up. If I remember correctly, they get um, another plus one attack. I think would be pretty nice to have. Ooh, poisonous and changes lanes. And now we've got a little bit more HP to chunk through and we've got some higher attack. So definitely a very noticeable power spike after the first boss, for sure. Uh, on Death summons a headless simule, which I would venture to guess is literally the head of the zombie we just killed. Follow up, move, and then you're going to poison and move. All right, well... As crazy as it sounds, I think we're fine letting our druid take some damage here. Check on follow-up. On which one? I think it was just this one that follow-up is after their attack, they're going to move. And they've got two speeds, so all of our units except our hero will outspeed them. I mean, honestly, I... I know this is going to seem weird, but wanted to make sure what follow-up was. Yeah, so it seems like follow-up is immediately after their attack. Round in is obviously after everyone is gone. I think I want to scooch our Sword Dancer over here. They can take the two damage here. Keeps our heroes safe. And our Druid can actually take this four damage. It's four because um, Poison is going to tick. Um, oh, last until the end of this battle, though. I mean, honestly, once the Druid summons the Ravens, we don't necessarily need them anymore, though they are a high damage unit. All right, no, I, I, I talked myself out of it. I want to do it this way. Let our Armorsmith be the sacrifice here. Um, and then this six damage can actually get this zombie out of the way. And then we'll just do what we can to focus down everything else. I feel like I'm happy with this. We'll send it. Okay, so yeah, Ravens are 1-1s one that are now boosted up to 3-1s. So our first round may not be great, but once we get our Ravens out there, that's pretty incredible. Dude, it's really cool that um, the developer stopped by and just gave out a free Steam key in chat. That's just awesome. You love to see that. That's one of the best parts about playing indie games, man, is um, you know, you get to you get to interact with the people that make these games and really, you know, show them how much we appreciate their artwork. Yeah, that was great. I mean, you just straight up got a, got the game for free. Not that it's expensive by any means, but, you know, great to see. All right, so at the moment, we got three damage coming in on this side, plus some poison. Um, and we can actually move our ravens around, and they won't exhaust, which is pretty nice. Um, I still play the last hex occasionally. I, I haven't touched the last hex in a long time. I should probably check that out. Um, I liked when we were playing that and the developer was pretty much always in chat while we were playing. It was cool. I kind of want to bring this Raven over here. Because then we can get a full three chunk in on the boss. Because the Void Wisp is going to blow up. The Raven would kill uh, the Urn. Actually, so here, here's, here's how I want to play this. It's going to be a little bit weird. So I want to do... This, this, what's your speed? Five, but so that'll kill you because you're going to attack first and then our hero is going to finish off the headless stimuli. Oh, so it's, we knocked their head off and it's not the head that's attacking us. It's the rest of the body. Now, we are currently looking at sacrificing the armor smith here. I, I think death is inevitable, and we're just going to have to accept this one. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I'm fine with this. We'll send it. As long as the hero doesn't die? Yeah, absolutely. 
Round end? Lowest HP? Oh, the lowest HP should have been the, the hero. Do I have that item wrong? Deal one damage to the lowest health enemy. I guess it's lowest health non-hero or hero if no other valid target. Probably how that works. Um, so at this point, like, we just outspeed all of them, right? Yeah, so we can just send it and we're good to go. Easy? Yeah, absolutely. I'd agree with that. Plus one XP. We'll give that to our sword dancer and then we're hitting the campfire. Um, Armorsmith is probably the only one that we'd want to consider getting rid of at this point. Okay, so they do start at level 2 now. Um, if this character kills an enemy, gain 1 gold. Deal 1 damage. So that's on hope. So we've seen all of these before. Granted, this is pretty solid. Uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for a refresh on this one. Mostly just to see more variety. Doom does something when, the, when an enemy character dies. So it has no attack on its own, but whenever we kill something, it deals two damage to a random enemy. And then we've got an enchanter. At the end of round, give all allied mages plus one power. Ravens don't count as mages, right? <laughs> Both of these seem pretty decent. Um, although this is very useless if there's only one or two enemies. This is just always good. That makes our second round that much more insane. And I think I like that better than the Armorsmith. But we need a tank. Yeah, I mean, this, this unit has the same amount of HP as the Armorsmith. So I have to move the gloves over for a second, I believe. This missed the Armorsmith, grab the Enchanter, and then... Yeah, so now the Enchanter has 8 HP. The speed doesn't matter. And then that gives both of our backline uh, units more damage on round 2. Which, to me, seems pretty good. So send it into another battle. Has plus 1 attack for each ally. Okay. I mean, that's certainly spooky, but uh, 5 damage isn't anything too awful. On death, summon three wandering orbs on round and move. These are wandering orbs. Targets a random enemy in any lane. Okay. Just going to do a cheeky run myself. Sounds good, dude. It, it, it's a really fun game. I, I am impressed with the depth uh, that's hidden below the surface. What I want to figure out is... Can we do anything crazy on our first round? I mean, obviously, like, we have an easy setup for kill both of these in round one. But we also have an option to stick our hero here and get in seven total damage. In fact, if we do this, we also can get poison down. What does secrets in the settings even mean? I don't actually know. Uh, we, we didn't play around with that at all. I think I kind of like this setup. I'm going to enable it. Yeah, go ahead and go for it. Yeah, no, I'm 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 going to send this. I think this is good. We're getting 7 total damage down on the enemy hero since we're adding some poison on top of the 6. We can obviously tank through the damage just fine. And um, look at what our second turn looks like. My goodness. Um, you're going to do one damage to everything. And if we just move a raven... Actually, do I even care about... No, just literally just do this. And we win. <laughs> because the ravens are too good. Because the Ravens are also super fast, so we're not even worried about taking any other damage. Uh, because, at least thus far, the Ravens have moved before everything else. And then level you up. Let's see what our Sword Dancer gets up to now. Plus one attack, plus three HP. Goodness. 
and then plus two attack while at maximum HP. So that means um, at max HP, it is a 4-8. Yeah, I would say that was worth the upgrade. Um, definitely go into the shop on this one. We, um, I, I like the set of characters we have right now. Welcome back, buy a thing. You know what? That's the most concise shopkeeper I've ever heard. To be fair, the first time I saw that message from the dev, I was in full mod mode. I saw a string of numbers and letters and my eyes turned red. <laughs> I honestly thought the same thing. My my hand was on my mouse moving over there to click the ban button. And then I was like, wait, hold on a second. That says Puzzle Box Games and that's a Steam key. <laughs> same exact thing. Round end, gain plus one power for a mage, plus eight speed, my goodness, all right. Battle start, gain shield. We could give a mage a shield to start with and just leave them on an island to start a battle. Honestly, like, the plus one power is cool and all, but our second round at this point is so good with the synergies we've got going on. And I honestly don't even think we need the speed. I like this on our summoner or on um our adept here because then we can just leave the adept on an island with this gain a shield and they can tank through the first round and they're level two so they've got an item slot i'm just gonna go that route i think that seems great next we level the raven mancer i just want to know the bird evolution yeah absolutely i'm totally down with that oh hair it snuck out from underneath the headphones uh, follow up, restore two health to a damaged ally. Uh, protect the Lost Adventurer. All right, the Lost Adventurer is not in spiderwebs this time. So we can definitely protect them. So these guys, when they die, or when an enemy character dies, they gain plus one power. So we'll just, you know, never let any of our uh, dudes die. So the whole point of this was to leave our adept on an island. So I'm pretty sure we're just going to set things up like this and call it good. I have the Dove Mancer as my starting unit. Awesome. So you too get to do an awesome summoner run. We got to put our tankiest unit in front of the Lost Adventure if we want to get the bonus gold. Uh, and this puts down an instant kill on this particular unit. Yeah, I don't see any other good options here. Except maybe overloading this lane so we can get the Ancient Urn out of the way. But I honestly don't think I care. Um, what is going to happen is the Feast Caller is going to heal this unit for 2. So if we're only doing 3 damage, it's going to be back up to a 2-5. Um, I think I'm fine with this. And then obviously like Sword Dancer loses its buff. Actually... Kind of would be cool to put the um, the shield on him, but can't do that. I think we'll send this. Okay, so the urn can get poisoned. So it just dies from poison. That's actually perfect. And then... Now, granted, the Lost Adventure prevented us from summoning all the ravens we wanted. But now... I want to overload this line. Sword Dancer is... Hold on, it's multi-class, so it counts as a mage now? Because it got the plus one damage buff from the um, the Necrotic Wand. Or not the Necrotic Wand, the... Um... Oh, what is it? Too many things now. We have something that gives plus one to all mages. Yeah, the Enchanter. The Enchanter gave the Sword Dancer plus one because it's multi-class. That's actually incredible. So how can we deal the most damage on this row? Um, I think probably just doing this. Yeah, you can take the damage. That's fine. We can do seven damage here. I wish you were inexhaustible, because then we could poison... Or actually, no, the, the Void is going to blow up and do one damage. So actually, no, this is a kill. Awesome. Easy peasy.
You love to see it. This has already got some great synergies going on. Uh, plus one XP. We're going back to the Summoner, which is this unit. Yeah, we want to see what comes after Ravens. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, it's probably around time to pivot, but... Um, I think I'm fine skipping Loop Hero and just kind of keeping this going. Um, Loop Hero is still in demo, and it is kind of frustrating to look at all the cool things that you can't do yet when you know that literally tomorrow you'll be able to do them. So I think maybe we'll just uh, kind of try to see this run through to its logical conclusion and maybe do a little luck be a landlord later if things get uh, around that point, but... Um, I feel like we'd probably cut off uh, a YouTube episode here and just say, hey, we're going to we're gonna play a little bit more of the dungeon beneath, and uh, we're just skipping Loop Hero for today. Um, but I, I'm feeling like we'll probably play some on stream tomorrow. Um, whether or not it's a full two-hour stream, we'll see. Um, but at the very least, we'll get through one loop tomorrow. I, I, would, I would say that. Um, yeah, why don't we go ahead and call uh, the, the YouTube episode here. We're going to stay live here on Twitch. Um, so... You know, make sure you come over on twitch.tv slash red nine plays and check us out. But um, we'll be back here in just a minute on Twitch for more of this and on YouTube. Um, probably either in a day or two, you'll have a little bit more dungeon beneath to watch. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, the single best thing. You, uh, wow, I went right into my old YouTube outro. No, we don't need to do that whole thing. We're good. Subscribe and all that stuff. And until next time, I'm Rut9 and I'll see you later.